Hello everyone, Brian here, and today I've got a game of Modern Warfare 2 for you. This is Domination on Quarry. I figured I needed a little bit longer of a game for the first episode of my new series entitled What Would Brian Do? A couple quick things I did want to mention though before we get started. First, since my wife is away on a business trip and she won't be back until late Friday night, since I had mentioned I wanted to do this with you guys before, I figured this Friday night would be the perfect opportunity for us to give it a shot. And that would be a little bit of a poker night. Uh, if you guys have the time and the couple extra dollars to do so, uh, anyone that wants to play, uh, please download Full House Poker from the Xbox Live Marketplace. And I'm thinking maybe Friday night, either 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night, we can get into, you know, we can set up our own private table, play some poker, talk some shit, and see if you guys are better poker players than me. Figure we could have some fun with that for a little while on Friday night. And also, for anyone that doesn't currently do so, uh, if you are interested, uh, I'll put the link below to follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to use that much more often now just to keep you guys uh, updated on when I'm uploading my new videos. And if I'm doing anything uh, a little bit more unique, if I need people to fill out a party for Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, or whatever it may be, or basically whatever game I'm going to be playing, if anyone's interested in joining me. So like I said, the link will be below in the description. Now that we've got those couple of housekeeping items out of the way, we can get into the rest of the commentary. As I mentioned before, this is going to be the first episode of hopefully what will be a pretty fun series called What Would Brian Do? I had told you guys before you could send me whatever topic, situation, or whatever else comes to your mind that you would want my opinion on and to see how I would handle it. Our first one comes from Wish For Your Master. I definitely said politics was fair game for this series and Wish For Your Master threw me into the deep end on this one. It looks like Wish For Your Master was considering doing something similar, but didn't really want the controversy, I guess, in some of his videos. Which you guys really know I don't mind too much. I really like generating conversation with you guys, whether you agree or disagree with me. It doesn't really matter, as long as we have a good talk about it. It looks like he wants to know what I would do with universal health care in the United States, pro-life or pro-choice, and gun control. All right. Obviously, I did see this comment a few days ago, and I did take a little bit of time to do a little bit of research on the healthcare issue. And I used the Canadian Universal Healthcare System as my main point of comparison for research purposes. Because I really don't like to make an uninformed opinion or decision. I like to, you know, figure out all the facts for myself and formulate my own opinion, unlike most of our politicians now. They just uh, do what most people tell them to or pay them to do, but that's an entirely different topic for another day. I think the Canadian Universal Healthcare System is a good plan that could help a lot of people in this country if it was ever implemented or if aspects of it were ever put into play. I know it is funded by public money as far as through taxes and whatnot. Because the sad fact of the matter is our healthcare system in this country is incredibly, incredibly expensive and flawed as well. Uh, especially now with unemployment being what it is. I don't know exactly what the figures would be or what percentage, but I'd be willing to bet that the majority of the people that are currently out of work do not have any medical benefits of any kind. Because I do remember one time when I was out of work and I received that letter from regarding COBRA that I wanted to continue my benefits until I found a new employer. It was exorbitantly expensive and I pretty much would have been putting my entire unemployment check towards having medical benefits. And for a family, or even a single person for that matter, that has you know an apartment or any other kinds of bills, that's really not possible. You know, I mean, you got you know rent to pay, car payments, and groceries, and other incidentals that you got to put your money towards if you're out of work, rather than put that entire check towards medical benefits. So, I mean, obviously there's other lower income people that even do work. I mean, not all of us that are employed make you know fifty thousand dollars a year or more, or even have an employer that is willing to split the medical benefits with us. So you are responsible for it on your own. And if you have a family. Like I said, you're talking about a ton of money, and you're that pretty much cover up your entire paycheck, and you just can't do that. So a lot of people out there that you know are married, have children, just can't afford it, and they're not getting the health care and the benefits and the treatment that they need. I mean, that's the unfortunate uh, fact of having a private health care system, and like I said, that's where I think the Canadian Universal Health Care System could come into play. They still do offer, you know, private insurance for people that do want additional benefits or coverage. 
that's not part of the government regulated plan because that is one of the biggest issues or the biggest bones of contention whenever it comes to the government stepping in and running something like that especially if something as personal as your health and your health care benefits the last thing you want is someone else other than yourself and your doctor making a decision for you as far as what care you need or what treatment or benefits you're entitled to so that is one aspect of the universal health care plan in canada that i really do like you know it has the core you know master plan which will cover everybody and give them all the preventative care and you know the critical care that they need and also does offer that private insurance so the people that do want it and can afford it for those extra benefits that may be just outside the scope of what the government plan has to offer so you get the best of both worlds in that respect i guess you could still say that the more affluent and wealthy people would still have the better coverages but the most important thing is the people that normally wouldn't have any kind of health benefits are now covered for the preventative critical and necessary care that they need so what would i do if it were my decision to make I would definitely look to either implement that plan in its entirety in this country or many, many aspects of it. Like I said, to make sure that everyone had some form of health insurance and health coverage to make sure they were getting all the care that they needed. All right, moving on to the next issue, uh, pro-life or pro-choice. Thank you, Wish for Your Master. This is not too touchy of a subject for a lot of people. This one I'm not going to go into too much detail with. I will say, though, that parts of me are on both sides of the argument. Uh, part of me agrees with the pro-life, part of me agrees with the pro-choice for many, many different reasons. I right, said so this topic, I am going to leave a little bit alone. All I'm really going to say about this topic is if I was in charge and it was my decision to make, I would leave the law alone as it currently stands. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, let's see, gun control. I did a little bit of research on this one as well because as many of us know, the United States does have a lot of gun violence problems and guns are very prevalent within this country. I, I use the uh, United Kingdom or England as an example uh, or comparison purposes regarding their gun control laws because their gun deaths as far as the Western nations go are pretty much on the lower end, if not one of the lowest in, you know, compared to you know, North America and Europe. And their gun control laws are very, very strict you know, compared to ours. I don't think uh, we as a country ever could get there because guns are just too much a part of our culture and who we are as Americans. I mean, going all the way back throughout American history, you know, the American Revolution when the average farmer or a craftsman picked up their gun and joined the militia to, you know, fight against, you know, the king. You know, you had the Texans in the Alamo fighting against the Mexican army back in the day. There's just so many examples throughout American history of the average citizen taking up arms to fight for a cause or against an invading army. So I don't think as far as who we are as a people and part of our culture, guns could ever be taken out of it. Uh, I mean, it is part of our constitution as well that we have the right to bear arms, you know, going all the way back to our founding fathers. Do I think that gun violence is a problem in this country? Yes. But I don't think just removing guns from the equation solves the overall violence problem. Honestly, I don't think you could remove guns even if you wanted to. I mean, criminals are still going to find a way to get their hands on the same way drugs still get into this country. And I think all you'd be doing is taking away people's ability to defend themselves. So, like I said, just removing guns in that respect, I don't think it really solves the problem at all. I mean, if you want to you know, injure or kill somebody and you don't have a gun available, you, most of the time someone just picks up a knife, they pick up a baseball bat, they use whatever they have access to to pretty much do harm unto someone else and whether it be a domestic violence issue, a gang thing, whatever the case may be, like I said, I don't think just removing guns is going to solve the overall issue. And in my opinion, you have every right to defend yourself, even if that is with a gun. If someone breaks into your house and is threatening your life, your family's life, by all means defend yourself. I know if that happened to me, I would absolutely use a gun if I had it at my disposal, and I would not think twice about it or regret that decision for a split second. And part of me also thinks that a lot of people that would normally commit a crime would be a lot less likely or inclined to do so if the person they were going to commit the crime against was licensed and trained on how to use a firearm and had one on them. I mean, you know, if I was a criminal, I wouldn't want to break into someone's house if I knew that they had a firearm and were trained how to use it. And I was sure as hell wouldn't want to assault somebody if they were possibly going to pull a gun on me and knew how to use it as well. 
that may be a little bit of an extreme way to think about it, but I think there is something to it as well at the same time. So ultimately, if the decision were mine, I would still allow the average citizen to get licensed and own a firearm to defend themselves and their property. So that part of our current laws, I would not change. Because like I said, I don't think you're going to keep guns out of the people's hands that shouldn't have them. And I don't think you should take them out of the hands of regular law-abiding citizens as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the new series. If there's anything you want me to cover, please feel free to leave it in the comments section. I'll get to it for my next episode. And if you wouldn't mind, please leave me a ring before you leave. And as always, guys, hope you really enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you soon. I hope you have a good one.